Swing into spring with the list. You don't want to make it complicated. It's really easy. Plan and plant the best garden ever. And that's all you need. Boost your body's collagen to feel and look good. It's responsible for your teeth, your tendons, your ligaments, your hair. Reminisce with great spring break movies without the sunburn. Hilarious, cute, but also very much relatable. But first, love the space you're in. Tailor your home with your unique style. That's at the top of our list right now. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Shaguna Duolo, and at long last, spring has arrived. Yes, so we are celebrating with a special Swing into Spring show, looking at some ways to squeeze the most out of the season that's all about new beginnings. All this time indoors has led a lot of folks to think about how they might want to freshen up their living space. So Heidi Fogelsong looks at 2021 home design trends, and that's our featured story at the top of the list. 2020 turned our kitchens into home offices, living rooms became classrooms, and overall we realized that when you're spending this much time at home, comfort is king. 2021 design, it is being comfortable in your space, but being bold within the space you're in. Hampton Design and Closets owner Mary Hampton says that this year's trends are less about style and form and more about personality and functionality. Starting with our first trend, organized and orderly. You know, it's nice to have aesthetics and have it be pretty, but it also has to function. And so in order to be able to get to things that you use regularly, things that you don't, big key to organization is to be able to use the space in the situation that you're in. So when organizing something like your closet, think about accessibility and make sure you can actually get to what you need. But don't just stop there. Organize your laundry room. You're in it every single day doing something that most people despise doing, but it's a must and it's a have to. If you have to be in a space, love the space you're in. Our next trend is about personality and productivity. Like handbags are my thing. I have a handbag that I look at every day in my office as motivation. Each space in your home should have a little of your personality or something that you're interested in. Having something in each of your rooms that you love will impact how you feel and then you'll continue to want to be more productive, want to do more. An easy way to do that and create some flares of nostalgia is by adding vintage pieces. Next up, we're doing away with the drab and living life in color. Gray and white is out <laughs> and earth shades are in. Moving away from the stark all white feel will open up your home and allow for some self-expression. Whether it be bold prints and doing something on just one wall of your house, definitely not overboard, but subtle touches that actually really pop. And our final trend is all about being cozy and connected. I think, um, you know, people really are looking for answers and looking for more connection. And so being connected to yourself within your space is going to be huge in 2021. And to do that, you want a space that you can relax in, which can be created by choosing cozier fabrics and even bringing in more plants. So bringing the outdoors indoors is a great way to be able to feel like you're on vacation in your home. Ultimately, this year's home decor trends are all about making your space the best for you. It's going to make people feel better and less stir crazy in doing some of these design trends. Some of this year's biggest design trends are on the top of the list. And a great way to keep the spring in our step, collagen. It's a major building block of bones, skin, muscles, tendons, and ligaments. As we age, we lose it. So Teresa Strasser looks at how to make sure you're getting enough collagen. Collagen is the most abundant protein in your body that acts like a glue that holds you together. It's good for your nails, your skin. It's responsible for your teeth, your tendons, your ligaments, your hair. And most of us aren't getting enough of it in our diet. So Dr. Chad Walding, a holistic health expert, has three things you should know about collagen. For starters, it can restore your body. 
That's something our body produces on its own, but that natural production process, it starts to decline the older we get. Our ancestors would eat all the parts of animals and make bone broth, which is rich in collagen. But in our modern environment, most of us are extremely deficient in collagen because we're not getting it in our natural diets and making homemade bone broth is often a lot of work. And there's a certain magic to the way collagen works, especially when it comes to the gut lining. The gut lining itself is just made of collagen. So when you repair that gut lining, the ability for the body to remove toxins improves and the ability for you to absorb the vitamins and minerals from the healthy, nutritious whole food that you eat also improves. To help replenish your body, use a collagen supplement. It's a white, odorless, tasteless powder when it's from a good source. Putting it in your coffee, you can put it in your tea, you can put it in your smoothies. There are many types of collagen, but he recommends type 1 and 3, which come from free-range cows and non-farmed fish because they aren't given hormones and antibiotics. The quality is really important and the way these animals are raised is also really important. Add some bone broth to your grocery list or try making your own. That's another great way you can get collagen. Finally, avoid the side effect. The number one thing that we hear from people is nauseousness and having an upset stomach. So take collagen in small doses. Maybe eat some mashed potatoes and a steak and chase it down with like some tea. It's just way, way too much confusion for the body. So keep digestion simple. Create a 90 minute window around when you take the collagen supplement. Really give yourself time to absorb that collagen, break it down so you can get the full benefits. Benefit the body by getting the benefits of collagen. April showers bring me flowers, and so it is time to get that garden in gear. A great garden can add beauty to your home and happiness to your life. So we've got pro tips to turn a little scrap of ground into a blooming, blossoming, veggie-producing oasis. Imagine having a garden like this in your own backyard. Well, this garden actually started out looking like this. Over the years, garden expert Justin Rohner has grown his own backyard wonderland. And after co-founding Agriscaping Technologies, he's created beautiful gardens around the world. Now he's sharing the secrets behind planting the perfect summer garden no matter where you live. To get started in the garden, one of the first things you need is some good tools. And you don't want to make it complicated. It's really easy. Maybe a shovel and this nice little garden knife. This is one of my favorite ones that I use in the garden. It makes it easy to be able to pick my weeds, cut through roots when I need to, and plant my plants. And that's all you need. The end of a good garden knife will allow you to weed easily. Now that you have your tools, you need to know your zone. So no matter where you live, you can grow something great in your garden. First thing you need to know is where do you live? What hardiness zone are you in and where your house actually resides? The U.S. is divided into different hardiness zones that's based off the average winter temperatures. So depending on where you live, it can help determine what plant will thrive and when to start planting. Each one of those has a different frost calendar, meaning when the frost starts and when the frost ends. And you need to know that so you know when to start your plants best. The prime time to grow asparagus or beets would be in summer in a zone six like Detroit, Michigan. But in a zone nine, like Phoenix, Arizona, they may not survive. You can find your zone on the USDA's website by typing in your zip code. And finally, to get that garden going, you need to know your microclimate. Each backyard also has microclimates within it that vary from A to F. And that doesn't mean that F is bad and you can't grow in it. It just means it's different. And you can grow different things at different times of the year. Whether it's a big backyard or even a small balcony, an A microclimate where sun hits all day is going to be hotter than an F microclimate where something like a tree will cause afternoon shade. You can use microclimate maps to help decide where and what to plant. So microclimates can make a huge difference in your garden. Here in a B zone, we've got a plant that's a cool season plant that's already started to bolt and go bitter. But if we move over to the E microclimate where we get filtered light underneath a tree, we'll actually find the same exact type of plant that's actually growing Still small, not bitter, still sweet, and you can extend the season of your cool season vegetables in an E-type microclimate like this. To find out how to discover your microclimate, you can head to Justin's website, agriscaping.com. Now you're ready to get your garden going. 
Up next, outsmart home security hackers. These devices automatically download the latest security patches. Then, artists with an amazing array of skills. How our environments and these kind of infrastructures influence us. Plus, a colorful way to arrange your home. It's easy to follow and stimulates creativity. Swing into spring continues. Yay! Next. Welcome back to our Swing into Spring show. If sprucing up your space for spring includes adding smart devices like video doorbells and connected coffee makers, beware. They could be an open door to steal your sensitive data. A Google security expert helps with ways to lock down your smart home. Okay, Google, unlock the front door. Most of us own some sort of smart device. Amazon or Google speakers, video doorbells, and even thermostats and vacuums. Being connected to the internet 24-7 makes them very convenient, but also risky if not secured. Once they're connected to the internet, to the outside world, they can be used as a foothold to then get access to other devices in your network. Ryan Campbell of Nest says the first step to locking down any new smart device is a strong and unique password, which is an easy thing to forget in the excitement of getting a new device. Strong meaning it's ideally 15 characters, maybe more. It's a mix of numbers, letters, and special characters. Unique meaning you don't use that same password for multiple accounts. While you may feel overwhelmed by so many passwords, you can get free help wrangling them from the Google Chrome and Firefox browsers. Generate unique passwords and strong passwords. You can automatically fill them in when you start to log into one of these services. They can also alert you to passwords that might have been compromised through some of these security breaches. Ryan's next tip, buy a brand name device from a reputable company that gives automatic security updates. So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to go in every single week, every single month and check for updates. But these devices automatically download the latest security patches that keep them safe and secure. You can always check the settings menu to see that you have the latest software. We'll close out our list with two-factor authentication, which is a fancy way of your device saying, is that really you? Two-factor authentication is just one more piece of information that you need to provide at the time of login. This takes a couple of different forms. The most common one is text message or SMS, where you enter your username and password, and you receive a text message and you with a six-digit code, and you enter that code in, and then you get, you get logged in. You can also use a free authenticator app from Google. The app shows you the code that you need to enter, and that code is only generated with the app on your phone. Raising your home security IQ. Someone is at the front door. By locking down your smart gadgets. You may be thinking spring is a great time to get out and finally see some art shows. Maybe even buy something to add a little extra oomph to your home. Well, to put you in the mood, Teresa Strasser looks at three women artists making headlines for their unique works on the buzz list. Teresa. Thank you. While most artists aren't appreciated until they've long since passed, these female artists are being revered in their day. Coming in at number one, Melanie Belanker, an artist who crafts Victorian miniatures out of her own hair. There was the tradition in the Victorian era of portrait miniatures as well as hair work, and that really spoke to me, partly because I'd worked a lot with recycled materials, um, things that had had uh, previous life. Her art collections can be found in prominent American art museums across the U.S., such as the Smithsonian. And her work focuses on a single theme, creating small portraits of everyday life. Pouring a glass of milk or what have you. That to spend that much time and concentration on it to make somebody really focus in on it, I think gives them some sense of how I see it. At number two, Rachel Duval, a textile artist who's known for her hand-woven work that combine geometric minimalism with a subtle color palette. Pass to the right. To the left. She has installations in art galleries and private collections across the country. Got some extra money? You can commission her to create something for you at rachel-duval.com. So from her loom to your living room. And third on our list of contemporary female artists, Martine Sims. 
She uses video and performance to examine representations of blackness. It's kind of looking at film, television, media, and what it does to us. It makes me think about how our environments and these kind of infrastructures uh, influence us. Her artwork has been exhibited and screened extensively around the world, including presentations at NYC's Museum of Modern Art, recognizing accomplished artists on the buzz list. We've got lots more to come. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Swing in a Spring show. A lot of kids are on spring break right now, but if you're being COVID cautious and you miss the celebrating, we've got three movies to recreate the spring break feeling, and they're on the hot list. Wouldn't it be nice to feel like you're back in high school and going on spring break? Well, with these three movies, you can. Incredible. We met up with film critic Zachary Pope at Roadhouse Cinemas for his spring break movie list, which starts with 1986's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. This is a classic masterpiece from John Hughes, and it's a movie that I feel like inspires you to go outside and explore your normal boundaries. Because when you look at this film, Ferris has lived in this city forever, but on this day off in particular, he gets to finally explore the best parts about his city. The question isn't what are we going to do, the question is what aren't we going to do? Matthew Broderick embodies what freedom and youth is in this role of Ferris Bueller, and I just eat it up every single time I watch it. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Next up, 1999's 10 Things I Hate About You. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. When I think of spring break, sometimes you want to have a big smile on your face. Sometimes you maybe want to fall in love. And 10 Things I Hate About You just makes you feel all that. You are amazingly self-assured. Has anyone ever told you that? I tell myself that every day, actually. It's just such a classic movie. I think whether you are a high school student or a college student, or maybe even someone who's just trying to relive their past, 10 Things I Hate About You will appeal to you. Thanks. And we fast forward to 2016 for Zachary's most recent spring break movie flick, The Edge of 17. Yes! The Edge of 17 is a hilarious, cute, but also very much relatable modern day coming of age film. And it's one of the best. I'm having a problem today, maybe. Several. When I like to think back to when I was on spring break, there were times where I felt like a loner. And Edge of 17 makes me feel relatable in that instance. And even when I was close to one of my teachers and having that same relationship and seeing it in here with Woody Harrelson is just great. I don't really have any uh, friends at the moment. And to be completely honest with you, I don't, I'm not interested. At all. We interviewed the star of the movie, Haley Steinfeld, and not surprisingly, she agrees. This movie really truly is a representation of what it really feels like to be a teenager, and I do find that there is something in this character, or if there's not something in this character, there's something in some other character in the story as a whole that people will find and relate to. Oh my god, I knew it. It's really just the hair. Are you even up there? Spring break movies that'll make you feel like you're back in high school again on the hot list. Friends, welcome back to our Swing Into Spring show. Now, spring cleaning is a great feeling, but if you want to go next level gorgeous and add zest in the process, well, we are adding color to our cleanliness with rainbow organizing. It's time to get organized, and this time we are using the colors of the rainbow, AKA Roy G. Biv, to guide the way. It really enhances the organizing style and order because it's easy to follow and at the end of the day it creates and stimulates creativity to learn more we turn to professional organizer leslie Lair. first up let's head to the fridge so what i love about a refrigerator is that every shelf really represents a different category the condiment section the cheese section the fresh produce section each have their own specific designated space and each one going to have their own separate rainbow. And pro tip, Leslie takes bulk items out of their original packaging and puts them in clear containers, which you can find online. It allows my family to see what's available, healthy options, easy food prep, and 
of course, order. Next, let's spruce up our bookshelves. She says store away the items that may have piled up over time and display items that really can make a statement. I love to have some of my favorite passions being displayed there as well as my favorite colors. And she says don't worry about the different height and weights of books. And the different heights just give dimension to the space. It creates an immediate, clean, refined look. Finally, let's head into the closet. Closets are the ideal space to follow the rainbow order, not only by category, but also by length of sleeve and item. Leslie says start with short sleeves, then move on to longer items like dress shirts and pants, sticking to Roy G. Biv in each category. It allows your eye to easily access what you have in your closet. And another Leslie tip, use velvet hangers, which are more narrow to maximize space. And for the color? I love white because it complements the interior of this closet. Now we can be coordinated and colorful with rainbow organizing. You know, organizing is never fun, but always satisfying when it's done. So that old method I had of just stuffing things under the bed, probably not the thing to do? Probably not since college. Mm, yeah. Wow, long time.